Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechazerim DAF Chafala begins analyzing the heter of the Pase Birois, the special walls around the well, where they work, and where another cooler known as Borgenin works, which regions. Tomorrow we'll discuss that and who it works for, a few of the details about where and when and how they work. Then the Gemara launches into a lengthy agarata, beginning with her chizda, discussing a number of drushes of Murray, Bar, Mar. And then the Gemara gets into agarata about the importance of mitzvahs midura bonon and keeping them and the significance of all the halachas we learned from Chazal. And that will take us to the end of the day. First, the Gemara discusses where the heter of the rudimentary walls around the wells works. That is the heter of Pase Berois. As we had seen in the past few blad, there's a special heter around wells. You're allowed to put four corner pieces which do not qualify as real walls. And you can use that to be able to draw water out of the wells, even though the well itself is a Rishos Yachad and the area around it is Rishos Arabim. These corner pieces make the area immediately around the well into Rishos Arabim, and then you can draw water into into a Rishos Yachid, and then you can draw water into the air. So where does this heter work? It's a special heter doesn't work in all circumstances. So the Gemara is going to discuss that. So Rav Yitzchak Barada says it only works for people who are being oiler going to Yerushalayim along the way. The Gemara will later include it's actually anybody who's on his way to shul, to yeshiva for a major traveling for the sake of a learning purpose. So the Gemara asks, what it means? A price that says it only works for animals. So you're telling me it works for people on the way to Yerushalayim. So says, no, it's the same. It's both. It only works for the animals of the people who are on the way to Yerushalayim because people themselves, even if they're on the way to Yerushalayim, don't have a head because they could just climb inside the well and drink, and therefore they don't have had to take water out of it. They don't have a problem. It's and it's, the hetter is only for them, so it's not for them specifically. They have a solution. It's for their animals. Tzimura says, but what do you mean? How could it be? We have another statement of Rav Yitzchak in the name of Yehuda, the name of Shmuel, who said that the whole hetter of these wells is if the wells aren't stale water wells. They are freshwater springs that are flowing springs. So Gemara says that if you're referring to people, so I understand you want good water that people are able to uh, drink that has to be from a spring, not stale water. If, however, this is referring to animals, so animals don't care what they drink, so then why should there be any halacha that has to be freshwater springs? Gemara says because the entire status of walls that we're giving these cross beams is only because of the chashivas of this thing. So it has to be respectable chashiva water that even a person could drink. It's not going to allow a person to drink it, but it has to be a level of chashivas that a person is able to drink from it. Okay, on the subject, the Gemara quotes another statement here, which brings these halachos and adds a few. This statement here says that the whole heter of these corner pieces only applies to animals. People can climb down inside, unless, of course, it's very wide, and you can't reach both sides of the wall at the same time, and we don't expect you to go straight down one wall and up it, so therefore you would be allowed to use the heter for yourself as well. Next, we add that you're not allowed to actually draw the water and give it to your animal to drink. You're only allowed to place it down in front of your animal, pour it in front of him in a trough or something, and then let him drink from it. So the Gemara says, well, what's the point of the quarter pieces heter if you can't even use it to feed your animals, to water your animals? What's the point? The point is to be able to draw and put it in front of him. No, we mean to say, what's the point of the halacha that you have to have enough space between the corner pieces and the well in order for the animal to fit his head and the majority of his body? What's the point in that if you're not going to be able to actually give it to him? The the logic of that is you should be able to give it to him without fear that he's going to pull you outside the uh, enclosure. So Gemara says, so this is the Gemara which was quoted yesterday a few times in the daf. And where it says that the situation over here is referring to where the animal is sticking his head out of a Rishos Hayachid and there is a corn crib in front of him. The corn crib itself is a Rishos Hayachid because it has walls and it is wide and the corn crib extends all the way to between the corner pieces which form this enclosure. So now you have a straight Rishos Hayachid going from the animal's mouth all the way to inside the enclosure and what you're doing is, is you're carrying the pail of water from the crib from the well over the corn crib so that there's no Rishos Harabim straight to the animal you want to give him to drink that way that you're not allowed to do because we're afraid that you're going to end up fixing a hole in the corn crib by means of the pail itself that is what it is all about okay now the more 
discusses where, which regions this heter applies, and on the subject we're also going to discuss another heter, and that's the heter of Borgenin. Borgenin is something that's used for Tchum Shabbos. The Lachos, you're not allowed to travel more than 2,000 amas outside the borders of the city which you are in. How do you define the city that you're in? So when the houses peter out outside the city, so that you have a 70 and 2 thirds amma gap between houses, then it's no longer counted as a city, and then your 2,000 amma radius begins. Now, as long as you have homes of some sort within 70 and a bit amas of each other, it's still considered city and you don't start counting the amas yet. So you're allowed to do is set up huts every 70 or so amas, slightly less than that, and that will extend the city limits as far as these huts go, as long as they're all within 70 amas of each other. So those huts are called Borgen, and that extends the Tchum by extending the actual borders of the city itself. So Gemara says, that's a special heter. That special heter and this heter of the wells only applies in certain regions. The two regions which we're going to discuss are Bavel and the rest of Chutz Laaretz. So where do these apply? So the Gemara now quotes the following statement. Rav Yirmi and Barabbas is the name of Rav. Borgenin doesn't work in Bavel. The reason for that is, is because there's a lot of floods there, and you're afraid the flood may actually knock out the hut, and it may not exist. Therefore, the hut is not considered to be established enough to count to extend the city. And the wells doesn't work in Chutz Laaretz, and the reason for that is there aren't other people... There are, Chutzarz obviously means besides for the Bavel area, because there aren't enough people traveling to go to Yeshiva outside Chutzarz, therefore it's not needed for them. Now that his version, a different version of this is that Ravirmiya Barab said the name of Rav. Neither of them work in either situation. The Borgenin don't work in either situation. They don't work in Bavel, like we said, because it could get flooded. And they don't work in Chutzarz. Because people may come, there's a lot of thieves, and people may come and steal the food or whatever supplies or whatever you have there, or steal the entire thing, and therefore it's not considered to be established enough in the Borg and in the huts, therefore don't count. As far as the wells, the wells don't work either. The wells don't work in Chutzars because there aren't enough people going to Yeshiva, and the wells don't work in Bava because, like we said, there's a lot of water there. There's floods, so if there's so much water, you don't need to have a special hat to be able to draw water out of the wells. Okay, the Gemara quotes an incident. Rav Chizda said to Mari Breder of Huna, Breder of Yirmia Baraba. Rav Yirmia Baraba is the one who said that Halacha that Borgen and don't work in Bavel. So Rav Chizda said to him that they say about you guys that you travel from the city of Barnish to the special place where Daniel was Mispalel, and they built a shul there that was called Daniel's Shul. You travel. That distance on Shabbos, and that distance is three parsois, which is about 24,000 amas, which is well more than the Tchum. So how you let it go so far outside the Tchum? And if you tell me you're relying on Borgenin, don't you know that your grandfather said that you're not allowed to rely on Borgenin in Bavel? So he went out and he showed him that there are actually homes along the way. There are there there are destroyed homes. There are, used to be homes, but there's still structures along the way, and therefore the city limits extend that far. Okay, the Gemara now shifts into Samagarata, and the Gemara quotes two drashas that... Rav Chizda brought in the name of Mari Barmar. First, how big is the Taira itself? So, Rav Chizda says in the name of Mari Barmar that uh, it was described as being endless without giving a size by David HaMelech, by Yev, by Yechesko. And then Zechariah came and he gave it a size. And let's see what it is. So, where do you see this? So, David HaMelech didn't give a size because he said, I saw an end to everything except for your mitzvahs. Eoiv said, Arukamir is a meter of Minayam, it's wider than the land and it's broader than the sea. Yechesko said that there's no size to it because he said, Yechesko was describing a scroll, it was unrolled in front of him, and he said that it was unrolled before me. It was uh, spread out in front of me and it had written on it, Kinim, the Gemara explains, is the punishment that Sadiq can receive in this world for whatever mistakes they may have. Like it says, Kinahi Vekoinenuha, that's referring to a dirge over something. Said Heget refers to the schad that Sadiqim get in the next world, like it says Alehi Goyin Mechinor, and Vahi is the punishment that Rishayim get in the next world, like it says Hayva Al Hayva Tavai, that you get one incident after another. Okay, so that's what the scroll said, but either way, he, he says that it spread out in front of me, but he doesn't say how long it was, how big it was. And along comes Zechariah, and he says that um, the scroll was spread out in front of him, and he said, he, They asked me, What do you see? Vahimar. He asked me, what do you see? And I said, I see a folded scroll. I mean, it wasn't rolled. It was stretched out and folded neatly in half. And its size and its folded state was 20 amas by 10 amas. 
So Gemara says, you see that the scroll is 20 amas by 10 amas. Now these amas are not human amas, which is what arms length. These amas are the amas of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. obviously a Baruch Hu has no arm and has no size, but the Gemara will explain what this means. So first of all, what is the size of this thing? So the Gemara says when it was folded, it was 10 by 20. So if it would be unfolded, it would be 20 by 20. And it was written on both sides. This it says it was written on both sides by Yechezkel. This is the same one. So if it was written on both sides, it means that the surface area that's written on is twice as much, which is 40 by 20. So 40 by 20 amas. Um, adds up to 800 square Amis. And now, what is uh, the Amis of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? So, we have a Pasuk in Yishai, it says, Mi madad b'shalei ma'im v'shamayim b'zeres tikein. The, the entire world, the heavens and the earth and the water, all measure HaKadosh Baruch Hu's zeres. Kaviyachal, again, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's no size. A zeres is from the tip of the little finger to the tip of the big finger, which is generally half an Amma. So, half an Amma by half an Amma is... Uh, one quarter of a square amma. So a quarter of a square amma is zeres, uh, and zeres is equal to all of the world. So uh, this scroll was 800 square amma. So it was 3,200 times larger than the entire universe. So that is the measurement. Okay, Rav Chizan now moves on to the second drasha of Mari Barmar, and that is an apostle in Yermia, where Yermia describes seeing two pots of figs cooking on the stove. And the first one is called, so he says there were Shnei Dudai Te'enim, two pots of figs, Lefnei Hechal Hashem, in front of the Pesach Migdash. One of them was very good, fresh, uh, high quality figs, and the other one was very low quality bad figs that you can't even eat them because they're such poor quality. So the Gemara says the good ones refer to Tzadikim Gemurim, and the bad ones refer to Hashem Gemurim. And maybe you'll think that the Shem Gemurim have absolutely no hope. They're just going to burn, and there's no hope for them. And then that it says, Both pots. Well, this is a puzzle from Shir Hashirim, which is referring to something else. But the drasha is that both of the pots, which are called Udaim here, gave off a pleasant smell, meaning in the end, even though the Shem Gemurim are going to end off being successful and giving off a pleasant smell. Another Gemara goes into that puzzle in Shir Hashirim, Hadudaim Nosnu Reach. The Gemara quotes it and, draw, and gives a drasha for it step by step. First of all, it says, Hadudaim Nosnu Reach, Dudaim. The Gemara says, Young flowers are first to young Jewish men that are often called Pirche, like Pirche Kahuna. And uh, they give off a pleasant smell as because they don't do any, they don't have a tam chet, they don't get involved in forbidden relationships. Next, the Pasuk says, which simply means he put a nice pile of fruits by our doors. So this Joshua here, Megadim is used two ways. Megadim is used first to mean speaking, and Pesachin refers to the openings of B'nai Sisral, and it means to say that the tell their husbands whenever they become Nida so that they don't get into any Averis. The second shot is that Megadim refers to Oigdais closing or tying up, that they close themselves to reserve themselves only for their husbands. Next, the Pazuk says, Chadashim Gamishadim, Deidi Tzafanti Loch, New and old, my beloved, I hid, I stored away for you. So Gemara here has, uh, first pshat is that Knesset Yisrael is saying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there are a lot of rules in Judaism, and the old ones and the new ones I kept, meaning the old ones that you gave me I kept, and I also made new ones, special gzeris, and the meter abundance for myself that I kept and I guarded, and I kept all these for you. On that subject, Rav Chizda said to one of the Rabbanan, do you know pshat in the Pasuk? Um, that says Chadashim Gam Mishanim. What's new rules and what's old rules? So he said it refers to easy mitzvahs and hard m- mitzvahs. And then Rav Chisa said, why, why would they be called new and old? They're both given at the same time. So the answer is that it refers to Divri Torah, Midir Araisas, and Midir Abanans. And that's the meaning of the new and the old. On the subject, the Gemara now brings a drasha which emphasizes the importance of the Xerais Midir Abanan. And the Gemara brings a story of Rabbi Akiva that shows that. Uh, with regards to the mitzvah of Tilsi Dayim, which is your Abanon, and the source for that. So the Gemara says, the Joshua of Rava, on a Pasuk in Kehelis, which reads as follows. The Pasuk says, More than that, my son, Harbi, be careful of a lot of Sfarim, and Kate's no end, Velag, Harbi, Yigias, Basar, and the Gemara will explain this step by step. So, the Gemara understands to mean be more careful with mitzvahs de Rabbanon than with mitzvahs de Eraisa, because mitzvahs de Eraisa, most of them are not carrying the death penalty. However, any mitzvah that you violate shows that you don't care and therefore you are guilty of breaking the rules that are very important and you are chayav misa for any violation of an isidur abonah.
Uh, now you're going to ask me if it's so important, why is it not written in the Torah itself? So the answer to that is the next line, Asayis Farm Harbe in case if we were to write them all down, it would take up too much, it would never be no end to it, and therefore we have to actually have the Rabbanon come and fill it in for us. What's the last line? Velag Harbi Yigiyaz Basar. This is a like this. Rapapa says, Lahag is from the word Laag, which means to make fun. Somebody who makes fun of the Chachamim it will be punished with Yigiyaz Basar, the exhaustion of the flesh, which refers to human waste. And the Rapapa says, it'll be hot. That is what his punishment will be. Rava says, no, 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 lahag doesn't mean laag. Lahag over here means somebody who learns, who's hoige in Divrei Torah, will end up having um, a lot of taste of flesh every time he learns. He will have a lot of good taste and geschmack from it. Okay, now the Gemara has a story here. The Rabbanon bring a bride. The story was that Rabbi Kiva was locked up in the Roman prison, and his Talmud, Rabbi Yeshua Agarsi, was bringing him water and a little bit of food that the guards let him bring in. One day, the guard decided that he was bringing too much water, and he probably needed so much in order to dig a hole to get him out, so he poured out half the water. So he came in, and Rabbi Kiva said, well, um, I'm an old man, I need water. So Yeshua said, Rabbi Yeshua said, this is what happened. So he said, okay, give me the water so I should be able to wash my hands. So he said, washing hands is not even enough to drink. You're not going to be able to survive by drinking it. How could you use it to wash your hands? So he said, look, I would rather not, I cannot violate the gzera of the chachamim and cause myself misa, cause myself to be chay of misa. I'd rather die of thirst without causing myself to be chay of misa. And therefore he went ahead and he refused to eat whatever bread they gave him until he had given him the water and he washed his hands with it. So the Chachamim heard this, they were very nispoiled, they were very uh, astonished, and they said, look, if Rabbi Kiva is able to have this level of Messias Nefesh in his old age, certainly when he was young, and if he's able to have this level of Messias Nefesh in jail, imagine what his Messias Nefesh for, the Mitzvahs are and were, when he was a free man. Now the Gemara just gives the source for until today, and the Gemara says it's from Shloim HaMelech, Rabbi Yehuda's name of Shmuel, when Shlomo Melech made Eruvin, at Sar Masechta and Yidayim, a voice came out of Shemayim and said, the Pesach in Mishle, Ebenim Chacham Leibacha Yismach Libi Gamani, if your heart is wise, mine will rejoice as well, and also, Chacham Beni Vesamach Libi Vashiva Charfi Davar, my son is wise, and my heart rejoices, and I will have what to respond to my critics. Okay, the Gemara now brings several drushes of Rava, one of which gets back to Shlom HaMelech's Takonas and Xeris, and the other ones here discuss the uh, uh, establishment of Mishalim for explaining the Torah. So Rava explains a Pazak, this is right next to the one which we just learned before in Shirashirim. This Pazak says, my beloved, let's go into the field, let's sleep in the villages, Nashkim Lakram, let's get up in the morning to the vineyards, Nirim, Parcha, Hagefen, Pitach, Asmadr, let's see if the grapevine blossomed, if the blossoms opened. Heinetu, Harimainim, did the pomegranates blossom, Shamatin, is the Dilach, there I will give my love to you. So the more explains that this is Kla Yisrael comparing themselves to the Goyim. And Rav says, Asadem, my beloved, let's go out into the field. Uh, the Kalashal is saying to Hashem, let's not look at those who live here in the cities. There's a lot of theft and improper behavior going on in the cities, in the markets, and in the busy streets. Better yet, yeah, let's go out to the fields and look at the Talmud Chachamim who are sitting and learning out in solitude in a situation of poverty and impoverishedness like people live in the fields. Nalina Bakfarim, that means don't read it as Bakfarim, but Bakfarim, let's look at those who are against you. Let's look at the idol worshippers who are against you. Let's see, you gave them a lot of good things, and they still kafir bukha, they still violated you, they still went against you. After that, he says, Nashkim Akram, and let's go out to the vineyards, that means let's go out to the shuls and to the base midrashos. Uh, let's see, in Pir- in Parcha Hagefen, that's if the people who learn Psukim are learning Pita Chasmadar. If the blossoms open, that's people learning Shnayis. He needs to remind him. If the pomegranates blossom, that's people learning Gemara. All these things, Kal Yisrael shows to Hashem to compare to the Goyim. And then it says, Sham Etain, as Doidai Lach, there I'll give my love to you. Aracha Kvaydi Vigodli Shavach Bani Avanesi. I'll tell you about all the greatness of my children and my Talmidei Chachamim. Abba Shem Amalch Meshalom, Rav Hamnuna says, Vaydaber Shloishis Alafim Mashal Vahishiri Chamisha Elaf, a Pasuk in Malachim. Says Hashem Amalch gave 3,000 Meshalom and songs he gave 1,005. So that means that on every mitzvah in the Torah he gave 5,000 explanations through a parable. Both through Derek Marshall and every Derek Banana gave 1,005 explanations.
Okay, now the Gemara says, what is the meaning of the Pasuk in Koheles? Ve'yoyser shohei Koheles chacham o'y limei dasa za'am ve'izein ve'chikir tikein m'shalom harbe shem ha'melech besides being very wise, taught the people things and he established and set up and researched a lot of things by m'shalom. What does that mean? So Rav explains limei dasa za'am, he means that he taught them the simone kriya, he taught them the trap, the taimim, and the tune, and he established what it should be for every Pasuk. And then... He explained the psukim through Mishalim, and then he went ahead and established Gezeris Midamadan in order that the Torah should be easier to keep. The Gemara says beforehand it was like a basket without handles, it was very difficult to grasp and to hold. Then came Shlomo and he set up these rules and he made it much easier for Kai Yisrael to guard the Torah. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.